So a couple of weeks ago on eBay, I won a uh, Model 1 computer. You see it sitting here, keyboard, monitor, and a little electrostatic printer. I knew from the pictures uh, that would probably come from a house that was smoked in. The uh, yellow on these two keys is really evident. The computer's clean yet really dirty. It definitely needs to be cleaned. I will uh, clean it down. Uh, I thought we'd go through and just take a chance and power it up and see what we get. The uh, This is the power brick it came with. It looks to me like somebody has gone in and replaced the fuse at some point in there. The solder, it's definitely been resoldered. Uh, I don't have any faith in this brick at this point. I'm not going to use it. I actually have a good one from my other system that I'm going to use. So let me... Uh, plug the cables in and we'll power this thing up and see what we've got. Uh, so a quick note of the eBay ad I bought this on. It, there was no pictures of it powered up. There was a picture of the monitor lit up with uh, no video signal. Uh, that was about it. You know, there was no real condition specified. So I don't hear high voltage coming up. Do I have the monitor actually plugged in? Yes, I do. Well, it looks like the monitor is plugged in. Let's. Oh, there is video there. Uh, that is about the best intensity I can get. The pots are really dirty. As you can see, staticky. They need to be serviced. I'm assuming everything will need to be recapped here. Uh, let me check memory size, see if we've actually got, yep, we've got 16K of memory. So we do have essentially a working keyboard monitor. I can see on the camera screen that the monitor actually looks brighter on camera than it does uh, to my eye. Well, I've been hook up the little printer and we'll see if we can print something. So as a kid with my first Radio Shack Model 1, this was the same model printer I bought as a kid. I haven't thought a lot about it since then. Uh, did a bit of research online. I have it set to, on the right hand switch, to the uh, TRIS bus, which means it goes directly to the TR-80 expansion connector. You can also set it to parallel or serial. I believe I've got the cable on the correct way here. And then there's a power switch back here fumbling around someplace. Well, it tried to print something. Uh, anyhow, we'll put power on the keyboard. And we'll see if we can print. This keyboard is really dirty. Make type, make typing in that little program very difficult. The, the shift key sticks down. Uh, the feel of the keyboard is odd. I'm just thinking that's really dirty. Anyhow, let's see if we can print the string hello world ten times. Well, it's vaguely printed on there. Hello world. Well, I'm sure with some work this little printer can uh, be brought back to life. So, Pretty cool. Uh, nice to see that that works. The keyboard works and the monitor is usable if dim. So, looks like I did okay for, what did I spend? $90 I think? It was $90 shipping. I spent $185 with the $90 shipping. So in essence I paid $185 for what you see here. Uh, there was a few manuals with it. There's the original printer manual. There's the uh, a couple of original manuals with the keyboard. There's the little manual for the monitor. I'm sure this was in somebody's closet. Somebody dug it out and said we should sell it on eBay, and they were probably disappointed they only got $90 bid price out of it. But, you know, uh, I do have some plans for it. 
I'm debating whether to go forward with those plans. Let me see if I can get the cables off here. Boy, that is tight. Pull power video. One of the things I noticed on the bottom was the operating case will void warranty. See owner's manual for warranty information. Uh, I don't know if this has never been opened and that's the original warranty sticker. I'm used to seeing red paint I thought down in the holes on these. Uh, I can see it looks like that the level 2 basic is actually ROMs on the printed circuit board which is really nice if I'm seeing down in there correctly. There is another socketed chip up under there. I'm, you know, say I see at least one socketed IC up under here, which does make me think that it probably has been opened, you know, with a socketed chip. There was some kind of work probably done on it. So maybe this was an after repair sticker. I don't know the Tandy history well enough. Uh, well, maybe I'll go ahead and open it up and we can take a peek inside. Well, here we go. Void the warranty. It's now voided. I've poked a hole in the sticker. And the screw is slowly turning up out of there. There, the head it feels like it's come loose. And the screw has come loose. So, let's see if I can get my fingers under here to. Uh, case loose. Yeah, really dirty inside. I see a red wire hanging up there that makes me think this probably has at least the cassette mod in it. It's got a lot of use. The uh, 5 volt regulator is on the other side of the printed circuit board here and that board has really been toasted. It's been very warm. I uh, I think I may go grab the shop back and blow the dust bunnies out of here before I go any further. So I've gone ahead and got the dust bunnies blown out. It was pretty bad. And as always the case, these little nylon spacers were locked down pretty solid. For me, I take a small screwdriver like this one. I just kind of work it around between the case of the plastic and the uh, little spacer. And if you just work it gently, they will uh, pop loose. As these have. Uh, this one seemed to be missing a spacer over here which was interesting. I believe there's usually six not five. Anyhow I'm going to flip it over here and pull the main board out and we'll take a look. Go ahead and pull the main board out. Uh, we can see that it does have the level 2 basic and ROM which is nice. Uh, it's had one video memory replaced here and if I remember that position right that's typically where you pick up the lowercase mod at although we don't have an extra 2102 any place in there so maybe it's just one that failed and then we have a TTL device here oh no that's the uh, character generator ROM I take that back and this is the character generator ROM, I'm pretty sure. And of course, actually ceramic DRAMs in it. It's like a pretty typical Model 1 inside. Uh, the uh, relay for the cassettes, nice and yellowed. Overall, the switches seem okay. Like they haven't, aren't failing. And it's just a Z80 CPU, not even a Z80A, which is, of course, all it needs. Not really sure. I haven't spent enough time in enough of these to really know. Like if this cap added back here is factory or somebody tweaking. Needs a good cleaning. Sure, it needs to be recapped. Uh, 
you know, we can go from there. Uh, I'm curious as to where that 12102 has been replaced because they're probably just a failed video memory. Uh, anyhow, there's a quick look at the board. Uh, I am actually happy to have the level 2 basic and ROM. I've got my workhorse model 1. Uh, which is the system you, you, you know I, I, I play with when I play hard with them. Uh, it is my go-to machine. This one was bought with the intent of hacking on a little bit. I want to try the CPM mapper board I see on eBay with it. I think that would be interesting. Uh, and I've got that uh, Sprinter 1L speed up mod which can take it to two or three times normal speed. I'd like to play with that as well. Uh, seems like this would be a good platform to really play with both on. Uh, I'm happy that it works. I'm not going to have to troubleshoot it and repair it. I don't know. So there's a quick peek inside. Let me flip the case back over, put it together, and we'll talk soon. Bye. A quick note, the other spacer actually was down in the bottom of the case. Uh, it's hard nylon, like it's maybe been replaced where these are that kind of spongy. Uh, and it's a little bitty bit taller. So it was just laying here on the bottom. I don't know whether it came off somehow with me moving things around. I don't know. Uh, but it is here, so I guess I was right. There are typically six spacers for the keyboard.